When I was growing up, the most accessible way to capture memories of friends' birthday parties or school trips, that sort of thing, was with one of these. A disposable camera. You'd shoot your 20-something odd shots and then you'd take the film to be developed. Sometimes you'd get them back on the same day, sometimes it would take a week. All whilst excitedly waiting, wondering how your pictures turned out. When it worked, you'd get some great looking photos. The film would give you this rich, warm, fuzzy kind of look to it. These are actually some snaps we got from Sophie's birthday last year. Look how great these turned out. I think these look really good. Unfortunately, sometimes they would turn out slightly not so good. In fact, here are some shots from my sixth birthday party. Take a look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's a cute one. Oh, I like that one. Oh, I was so small. Oh, the memories. Oh, the memories. <laughs> People are so nostalgic for this old technology, and I totally understand why. I mean, there are filters designed to replicate the feel you get from these old cameras. So I thought it was pretty cool to see last year. People were basically hacking these disposable cameras, removing the lenses from them and attaching them to their own modern mirrorless cameras. And that gave them an interesting mix of both worlds. I thought that was pretty cool. So today, I'm gonna to be trying that myself. Well, now that's cool. That's cool. Let me, let me try it. Welcome to PJ's workshop. So we're doing a little bit of surgery here, a little bit of camera surgery. So let's start by cracking this bad boy open. Now you're probably thinking, PJ, why have you got a hammer? Why is there a hammer here? Look, I don't want to have to use this. I want a bit more of a peaceful extraction if possible. But you know, if I need to get my hammer on, I, I, I'm not afraid to use it. Say cheese. Fuji, say cheese. I bet you'd love a piece of cheese right now. I've got a video over here teaching you how to take it apart. So naturally, I'm not going to watch that. I'm just going to figure it out for myself. Okay, skip, 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 skip. Sweet. Right. So this is the film, I think, which as soon as it's exposed to light is going to be destroyed. So all those photos I took earlier are unfortunately now moot. Look at that. There's your film, baby. Oops. <laughs> it's just like the movies. So it should just be as simple as, ah, pop, pop, pop it off. When you really boil it down, this is all it really is. I just wanted to feel love. Super simple. And there we have a very petite 35 millimeter lens. So what I need to do is drill a small hole in this body cap to poke the lens through. I should have in here 16 millimeters. Yeah. Well, that seemed to work, but obviously this is all very experimental. So if you do want to try this at home, be safe about it, you know? Okay, so I'm just giving that a little bit of a clean up. Does the lens fit? Yes, it does. We have a lens. I can't remember if there's a name for this. Some people call this kind of thing like a pancake lens. It's like a little egg. A leg? Egg. Egg? It looks like an egg. A little egg. You don't eat many eggs, do you, Sophie? <laughs> All right. You're going to want to hold still for this. See you on the other side. Okay, we're in. All right. So. Obviously, we have no control over the focus at all, so definitely can't do any close-ups. <laughs> but wide landscape shots will probably look quite nice. We can see just how effective this tiny little nubbin of a lens is. Maybe that's what we call it, the nubbin. <laughs> Let's head out into the streets of Brighton and see what magic we can capture. <laughs> Welcome to Brighton. These are the North Lanes. You know what, I'll get a couple of shots just here. So we made our way into Brighton, starting off towards the North Lanes. When people ask me where to go when they visit Brighton, I always recommend the North Lanes. As soon as I started, the first thing I noticed was the camera was getting this subtle edge warping and chromatic aberration, which isn't too dissimilar from what you might get from the Kodak disposable cameras. This sort of look would normally be an absolute nightmare, but on this occasion, I actually didn't mind. I kind of wanted the results to be at least a little bit bad, so this didn't feel like a complete waste of time. It's kind of cool not having to worry about focusing. Just point, shoot, done. Quite nice that you've actually got a good bit of range on this. I can actually get a good shot of the snail. Snail o'clock. Well, whether it's a good shot or not, that remains to be seen, but 
Scotia. It's a giant Bart Simpson. I love that there's like next to no setup time, it's just point and go. Also, I wonder what this QR code points to. Somebody in the comments, let me know, what does this QR code point to? Yeah, if it takes you to a bad website, uh, you, didn't, you didn't get it from me, okay? I got the cyclist. <laughs> I got you, Mr. Delivery. Welcome to the Royal Pavilion. This is where I live. Unlike the film camera, I actually did have control over the ISO and the shutter speed, which was super helpful on a day like this where the weather was just constantly changing. So I kept my ISO low and adjusted the shutter speed as necessary. This is the kind of versatility that this unique setup gives, which is just great. There was one summer where this little place was completely swamped with Pokemon Go players. It was kind of amazing. Now. Not a single Pokemon in sight. Not even a Magikarp. I will say that I'm glad that I dressed up as an industrial grade emergency beacon today <laughs> because the red really stood out against the slightly monotone background. I think that's not entirely the camera's doing though. It was just a bit of a gloomy day. I'm in the donut. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there's someone in there? Probably, yeah. I felt really touristy going around taking pictures of seagulls and the Brighton Pier, but no one cared, as far as I could tell. However, one guy did remark how surprised he was to see me using a camera. His daughter added, yeah, phones are much easier to use. Well, you know what? This hacked lens is probably the closest to a phone you could get in how easy it is to use. Excellent seagull shot. <laughs> that might be the best photo I've taken today. We've come down to Brighton Pier, which, yes, is maybe a little touristy if you live in Brighton. But whenever we have friends come to stay, they always say, can we please go to Brighton Pier? So we're like, all right. You can get some good donuts from here. I will say the donuts are magnifique. Let's try and get some good shots as well. PJ, watch out. Oh. I'll get the iconic Helter Skelter shot. I love that the seagulls are providing a good little accent to the shots. It's like free, what do you call it? It's like they're working for free. <laughs> This here is the West Burnt Pier here in Brighton. And it's a pretty iconic landmark, honestly. It's burnt down maybe about 20 years ago or so. The council have just kind of left it to keep rotting and eroding. Bits keep falling into the sea, but it's really cool to look at. It's a cool little piece of history. And also, it featured as a little cameo in Everything Everywhere all at once. Colors in general popped really nicely. I jumped at the chance to take any snaps of street art that splashed around the walls of Brighton. The thing I really loved about going out and about with this camera is it got me to really just slow down and take in my surroundings more. I looked around at things that normally I wouldn't take the time to look at. Going down alleyways that I would normally have no reason to go down and admiring the art on the walls. It kind of reminded me that even though I've lived in Brighton for 10 years now, there's still a lot of it I actually haven't seen. So thanks for that little nubbin camera. <laughs> Thank you. 
So finally, let's go over the pros and cons of this setup. The pros, the camera is super lightweight, which I loved because basically you haven't got a big old lens weighing you down. Super easy, just throw in your pocket and whip it out at a moment's notice. Do not whip your nubbin out at a moment's notice. <laughs> the image quality, surprisingly still really good. I know it's the guts of my Sony doing the heavy lifting here, but the fact that it can even function at all as a camera is kind of amazing to me. This little guy is still doing so much. Another pro is that there's absolutely no way to control the focus, so it's just point and shoot. So now onto the cons. There is absolutely no way to focus, so it's basically just point and shoot. <laughs> you see what I did there? Did you like that? This definitely isn't the worst con. Again, if you're trying to simulate the look and feel of a disposable camera, you can't focus with that either, so... Not the biggest issue in the world. You can't get too close up though. You've got about a meter's distance before things come into focus. Because the lens isn't a real lens, you have no control over the aperture either. Which again is honestly fine. I think it's stuck at about f11, so you're getting a little slither of light going in, but not much. And of course there's no inbuilt stabilization, so I didn't manage to do any filming on it because it looked very bad, so I just stopped to taking photos for this video. And so, my closing thoughts. It's funny when people talk about camera lenses and they talk about the quality of the glass and how expensive the glass is. Yeah, you need really high quality glass to make it anywhere in this industry. So it's kind of amazing that this was just 20 pounds. Now, obviously I cannot compare this to a 2000 pound lens because it's very situational and there are things that you obviously wouldn't do with this. But it's fun for a little jaunty romp around Brighton taking some experimental photographs. If you have any interest in videography or photography, I would highly recommend this because this was a lot of fun. Thank you for watching this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give this video a like like and also subscribe for more videos. I'm gonna throw all the photos I took up on my Patreon, so if you wanna check that out, download a photo and print it and blow it up the size of your ceiling so you can look at seagulls when you go to sleep at night, you're very welcome to do that. So please check out the Patreon if you're interested in anything like that or access to the Sweet Potato Discord, check it out. All right guys, stay rad and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Mm -mm -mm.